Hey guys and gals, I'm going to do a follow-up Q&A on each one of these videos that I've done in this series of gaining strength while cutting. And before I get into that, I really have to say thank you very much for the great questions and then also just the kind comments. I'm, I'm elated that this, um, this series was so well received and, and I hope that it's something that will serve our future generations as they're you know, hopefully going to make our, our sport more and more popular. Luckily, I'm not Eric Helms, and I can, uh, I just got a few questions, and I'm going to answer each of these questions uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel in, you know, in a video series, follow-up video series. If I was Eric Helms, I wouldn't be able to do that, because he has gets hundreds and hundreds of questions, but with me, I only have a few. So I'm just going to go through them right here and answer them all, okay? And I'm going to try to keep it short. Uh, you guys know how I like to get on tangents, uh, since I am kind of passionate about this, but I'll try to really keep on task. Okay, so the first question here, uh, Owen says, Brad, how do you structure your weightlifting days around this type of cutting regimen? Do you lift on maintenance days and rest on low intake days or vice versa? And really, to be honest with you, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I myself, I just, I just train when I feel like training. Uh, because if you think about it, in, in the context that we're doing things, you know, we're, we're traveling along at maintenance for five days, we drop down for two, okay? We travel along at maintenance, we drop down for two, okay? The body doesn't know time frame. It doesn't know what a day is, it doesn't know what a week is, okay? And so really, if you're training here, okay, everything's fine and dandy, okay? Because um, you got, you know, these days here and you're recovered from these days here. But likewise, let's say that you do train here, okay? Your body has barely figured out that it's getting less nourishment. Plus, it's only two days. So it's such a short period of time in relation to weeks and weeks and weeks of cutting that you're probably not even going to feel the mal effects of it, okay? If anything, if you run this type of a setup for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and don't periodize monthly, you know, basically all you're doing here is you're just bringing your average intake down, okay? So if this is maintenance, the average over the course of months and months and months is kind of down here, right? So if anything, you're probably going to feel that months and months and months down the road. And by that time that happens, it's kind of time to monthly, monthly periodize anyway. So, you know, myself, I didn't really worry about it too much. And, and that would be my advice to anybody else as well. Don't, don't sweat the details. It's really, it's more important um, when you get your training in than trying to schedule it around your nutrition because your body doesn't really care, okay? Stewie here says he thinks closer to the end of the video he said higher intensity type work will be done on your maintenance days, um, you know, and, and easier high volume work on your, on, on your caloric deficit. But like I said, it's such a short period of time that your body barely figures it out that you did have, you know, two low days. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of all this accumulation, of this accumulation over months and months and months. It could add up, but at the same time, that's why we set up this regimen the way we did. Okay. Um, okay. Really great comment, Brad. You know how in something you just read, it just works. It's, you just if that's how I feel right now. Awesome stuff. My question: uh, Would you also recommend this to someone who's uh, only goal is to get leaner with the same amount of muscle mass as opposed to the traditional stuff. Um, and so I think the answer to that question is yes, obviously. But first I want to make sure I, I define traditional stuff. I'm assuming traditional is just kind of the old fashioned, here's your maintenance, just stay at a deficit. Okay, that's kind of what I interpret the traditional stuff to be. Um, so yeah, yeah, this I've done. In fact, I think all of us kind of older bodybuilders have done this. And, and really what you end up finding out is that number one, you lose a lot of muscle that way, a lot of size. And you know, you kind of, you, you lose muscle fullness. You know, it's like you kind of get that stringy look. Um, plus number two, we don't have to work that hard. You know what I mean? We can still get just as lean, we can still lose you know, the, the, the same amounts of fat and maintain the muscle um, and not work that freaking hard, okay? So, um, would you recommend for someone whose only goal is to get leaner? Yes. Now, it's going to take a little bit longer, okay? 
just staying at, at, at an ever increasing caloric deficit will get you there faster, but it's usually at the cost of muscle size, fullness, and strength, which if you're a strength athlete like a power lifter, that's the last way you want to do it. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's more effective at maintaining your muscle, okay? And those are those studies that I talked about that were in the description. I'll make sure and put those in the description of this video as well. Okay. Hamoon, I hope I answered your question. Um, another great comment. Something that actually makes more sense. Um, let's see. Amazing info. Thank you so much. Again, thanks really for these, these comments, you guys. It really is very encouraging. It encourages me to make more videos. Interesting video. Would you remember cycling for lean bulking as well? So cycling in the same fashion. I'm showing you to make consistent weight gain, strength gains due to a fairly active lifestyle. Um, I mean, you could. I don't think that you necessarily need to. I mean, when you're looking to bulk, I mean, essentially there, all you're wanting to do is, if this is maintenance, is just maintain uh, a, a caloric surplus, okay? So where you're consistently eating more than your maintenance. Now, however, that being said, you know, you could cycle, uh, especially if you're the kind of person uh, you mentioned that you, you have a fairly active lifestyle, that you're in the military. If you're the kind of person that's expending a ton of energy and therefore a ton of calories, it may be hard for a person to eat that much food all the time. Okay? So again, you have to know what your maintenance is. You have to know what you need to take in to maintain your weight, first of all. And then, yeah, essentially what you could do um, is you could kind of cycle this way in kind of the reverse format. Okay, so if we've got our weekly, you know, um, periodization here, week one, week two, you know, you could essentially, you know, let me get rid of our, because here's our average, right, our average intake being just above maintenance, right? Um, you know, just so you're not having to eat so much food, you could kind of maybe let go on the weekends, you know, and party a little bit, okay? So that essentially know your maintenance, eat at maintenance, you know, throughout the week, and then maybe when the weekend comes along, partake and really get those calories up, okay? And then maybe what you might have to do is, you know, maybe trickle back down, eat at maintenance, and then, again, shoot up maybe on the weekends, okay? So you could cycle that way. However, again, really all you're doing is you just average all this out over the course of weeks and weeks and weeks is you're just eating at an average of a little bit of a surplus, okay? So that would work if you are kind of one of those people who needs to eat a lot of food because your maintenance and your expenditure is so high, you wouldn't really need to, though, okay? All right, my board's getting kind of messy. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Okay, one question, Brad. You said you don't want to throw out numbers, but can you give out an idea of what a low day means for you? What's the difference? Let's see, we got more between low normal, 400 calories, good to info and avoid wacky 1,000 calorie day, low days in some cases. Um, and you could do that. I mean, there's certainly nothing wrong with just having 1,000, like if your maintenance is 3,000 calories a day, 21,000 calories a week, there's certainly nothing wrong with just taking in like 2,000 calories for two days. That's a 2,000 calorie deficit for the week. Okay, if, if, you're, if you're looking to lose, what, a th uh, two thirds, two thirds of a pound of fat a week, that would be a perfect program, okay? Um, so, let's throw up our, our, our graph here again, okay? Here's our, our little graph. We've got week one and week two. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Oh boy, nine minutes. Okay, I'm going to try to be quick here. So here's maintenance, right? Um, so let's say that maintenance for you is, again, you know, 3,000 calories per week. Okay, if you travel along, and, and again, this depends on how you program it. If you want to lose, you know, a, a pound a week, that's a 3,000 calorie deficit for that week. So if you're traveling along at 3,000 calories per day, okay, which is essentially what? 21,000 calories a week, you need to be taking in 19,000 for the week. So you could very easily just travel along taking in 3,000 calories a day, and then when you want to get to that th those two low days, drop down to 1,500 
for two days. 1,500 deficit, 1,500 deficit, there's 3,000 calories, bring it back up for the following week. 3,000 calories per day, okay, five days, then for two days, cut it in half, come down to 1,500 for two days, bring it back up to 3,000, okay. So that's a 3,000 calorie deficit a week. You should yield one pound per week of fat loss, okay, four pounds per month, okay. So that would be a, a, a fine and dandy way to uh, to program your diet. Now I'm going to try to be real quick here because we're already pushing over 10 minutes on the video here.